So this talk is inspired by an experiment I conducted a year or so, yeah, I guess it was a year ago, about right now. And before I get too deep into the talk, I'd like to do a little bit of time travel. So in the 80s, I was traveling the world with Carmen Sandiego. We were probably both dying of dysentery. Uh, but more importantly, I was going through this mapping of my hands to what I was looking at using this keyboard and mouse that we're also familiar with. We had this cardboard box. It was a fruit box that we'd go over our hands, and we weren't allowed to look at our fingers, and we had to figure out how to control what was going on the screen with our hands doing something on a different plane. It's a little like the, the belly head pat thing that people like to do. This all came in handy though, because 10 years later, it was all of the stars in alignment for me. I was a teenager, I had internet access, I could chat with my friends on ICQ and Hotmail. I was using Angel Fire, and I could switch to advanced mode and teach myself some HTML. I was building websites. Suddenly I was in demand because my dad, his friends, they all wanted to be on this part of the internet as well. Today, not much is different. My hardware is a little faster, the internet's faster, my tools are a little more fancy, but ultimately I'm using a device that is not all that different from the Apple IIe I started on. Meanwhile, though, there's a parallel universe, because in America, 40% of our children under the age of two are using these tiny touch devices, and they're using them naturally. There are also many parts of the world, including China and India, that never actually got computer saturation. And a company like Xiaomi is putting smartphones into the hands of people who have never been online before. So they're going through that mental mapping of what it's like to use a touch device and they've never seen, used, or owned something with a keyboard and mouse. So that creates an interesting ecosystem. It creates an ecosystem where you have a whole lot of people coming online. The number I had on there, two and a quarter billion, is almost a third of the planet, and that's only two countries that I sourced for census data there. So if you have that many people online suddenly, you're going to have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of businesses that suddenly want to be online for the people who now have smartphones in their hands. They're not necessarily going to care about responsive design or desktops. They just want to serve all of those people who suddenly have smartphones. So just like me, when I was in the 90s and learning how to use Angel Fire, and I was doing it for personal satisfaction, I was excited by it, people wanted to pay me to do it, I imagine someone taking their phone, being intimate in that environment, and wanting to produce content and create and build things just as they consume. So I had this hypothesis at the time, a year ago, I was still rolling with an iPhone 4, and I wanted to simulate the environment where I built a site on my phone uh, as a teenager, so I added criteria. I was only going to use free apps to try and do it. It needed to be customizable because in reality, if we're mirroring today's process, we want to be able to write plugins, we want to be able to edit themes, so not use something where I just sign up and create a magical website. Uh, and just to make it a little more difficult, I wanted to get into version control. That's a little difficult with an iPhone 4 because you're not using the file system, so you don't have a local dev environment. I selected WordPress as the CMS for the experiment for a lot of reasons, not just because I enjoy WordPress, uh, but also they had rolled out their mobile administrative interface in 2013. That's important when working within a CMS. The theme browser allowed me to try on themes before installing them. Also, in application plugin management uh, would allow me to add plugins without, again, downloading them to my file system and uploading them into uh, my application. And then the native editor, that might come in handy for editing some style sheets. I selected Media Temple Grid Server for a few reasons. Primarily, I already had an account, so it was free for me to add another domain to it. Uh, but also, they had just rolled out their mobile admin interface in August of 2014. That summer, they also added Git to their stack, so I could take advantage of that. So for the rest of this talk, if the internet gods are willing, I am going to play my millennial card 
and stare at my phone instead of paying attention to you. So there are a couple of things I need to do to uh, walk through a web development process. The first thing is I need to set up my database. Hey, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, I'm still here. I need to set up my database. Now, I'm like Rachel Ray, so I already have a database in the oven. Uh, but I just wanted to show you what the admin interface looks like. I have a file manager. I can chmod some folders if I need to set file permissions on my WP content. I can manage my database and add users and add permissions. And so this is what that mobile admin interface looks like. Um, but I'm not going to use that right now. I'm going to recognize that I already have my database created. I already have my account. So the first app I'm going to use is called Server Auditor. And it allows me to SSH into my server. Gives me this cool little terminal app. Uh, and I'll make all of, the, all of this info available later on. So this is really just a live demo for me to make lots of mistakes. I'm going to CD into my domains folder. Keeping up, there's a little bit of a lag. Yes, all right. So now I'll ls just to show you that I'm in my HTML folder and there should be nothing in there unless I forgot to blow it away and it is empty. So I don't have anything in my HTML folder. So the first thing I need to do is of course install WordPress. Well, how do I do that on my phone? That's why I'm in my SSH app because I actually need to transfer the latest version directly from WordPress's server. So they make that available as a latest zip file or a gzip. And I will use the gzip. Uh, my host gives me a weird error about certificates. So I need to add this no check certificate flag. Let the interface catch up for a second. And then after the flag, I just do my full URL to wordpress.org. Most of this talk is not in the terminal, it's just the uh, initial file stuff. I haven't, oh, I'm missing a slash. I haven't found a good GUI for doing this part of the process. Keep it going. more okay try that again no too far one more two more And that should be good. So now this will take a second. It's going to show us everything copying over to my server. So now if I ls again, that lists the files within the directory I'm in. It should show me my latest tar.gz within my web directory. So now I need to unzip that. And there is a tar space xfz space and then the file name so latest dot tar 
Gz. All right, now I'm going to ls again. And I should have my zip file as well as that WordPress directory. And I do. So now I don't want my site in the WordPress directory. I want it in my root. So I'm quickly going to move all of these files up into the root. So for that, I need to cd into WordPress. All right, and now if I ls, I should see all my magical WordPress stuff. All right, now this was probably the most complex one. I got cp for copy, some other gobbledygook. I don't know what it means. RPF. Uh, there's an asterisk. I think the asterisk means everything. And then I need to give it a dot dot slash to say I want everything to then move up into the next directory. So I hit return on that. Should show me a bunch of stuff fl flying by, or maybe it just told me it was successful. LS. Or actually, I don't want to LS. I want to CD back up a directory. Now LS. So I'm back in my root directory. I see all my stuff. I still see that WordPress folder, and I'll still have my zip file here. Normally here, I would do some file cleanup, delete the other WordPress directory, remove the zip file. But I'm going to pretend I already did that for the sake of time. We don't want to see that part. It's not all that exciting. But now if I go back to Safari, because I already had that database in the oven, I already have my domain that has nothing on it. It refreshes, and it has some cached stuff. But I'm going to go ahead and refresh, because this website shouldn't exist. All right, here we are. So we're on that famous setup screen. So I go through my normal setup here. As you can see, this install screen magically is mobile friendly, which I, I don't know if that was intentionally tested to be so. Uh, if anybody imagined that we would be doing this on our phones, but it's certainly possible. So now I'm going to put in my database info. And it's not best practice to use the same username as your database, but because it's quicker for me to copy and paste, I'm doing that. And just because you guys are all following along, and so are people on the internet, I have the world's most complex password. Select, okay. Let's use that. Put it in. All right. And for my local host, it's not local host. It is what? Something complex. All right, DB. And it's a, it's a dot com. All right. Everything else is good to go. So hopefully I see a success message. Error establishing a database connection. And that is because uh, it's hard to copy this password. No, is it right? Copy, okay. What did I do? Try again. I have a delay, so no. Shut down. Internal. Maybe I did my. Uh, 
Oh, it's actually not my password. It is my host. Dot S. Now submit. All right, so I've connected to the database. Now I need to run the install. And I should have a website here in a second. So let's call this WordPress US or WordCamp US. Let's do that. Give myself a admin username. Again, not good practice, but I'm going to use that world's worst password as my admin password as well. Put in my email. Finish installing. And then it'll want me to log in, and then we get into the fun part. Welcome to WordPress. So I now have a WordPress site. Uh, the first time I did this, I did have to go in, and I mentioned the permissioning in the ch mod because I did have to go in and actually change my folder permissions. Something has changed, either in the grid server configuration or maybe I did something better in the install process. Um, but already, I'm ready to start adding my themes here. So I already know, oh, look, there's an update. In true WordPress form, something wants to be updated. It says a kismet. Yeah, a kismet has an update. Let's do that so you guys don't spam my new mobile phone site. Our failed to write request to temporary file. Uh oh, so maybe I do have a permissions problem. Let's try that again. Actually, I'm going to try it with my uh, other plugin. The first thing I want to do, so I'll skip a kismet for the moment, is actually install a child theme configurator, because again, okay, 10 minutes. Uh, again, I want to be able to fork a theme and mirror the uh, actual process of designing the website. So there's a nice plugin I found called One Click Child Theme. Install that. Let's see if I get the same temporary file error. Download failed, failed to write request a temporary file. All right, For, I only have a handful of minutes left. So it looks like I won't have time to go back and change all of the file permissions. But what I will show you is I'll still give you a tour. So if my file permissions were working, I would have installed a one-click child theme. I can then actually go into my theme installer and it allows me to look at themes and actually see if they're responsive or not in here. So if I go to Add New, I had chosen that one that you saw before. It was called Retro. Retro. And then when I look at it, uh, there's a little bit of a bug here for phones. It hasn't quite been optimized, but I can collapse this thing to the side. It shows me what that theme looks like on my phone, uh, but it still has some Chrome in here, so it doesn't quite look as perfect as it does after you install it. If, this, if my file permissions were letting me upload right now, I could go ahead and hit Install, and I would configure it like I normally would. Uh, when I create a post within the site, 
I can go ahead and do uh, media management as well. And my whole media library works. I could take a photo and pull it in. And then for the last piece that I want to show you before uh, I get into anything else is the version control piece. So if I SSH back into my server, as I mentioned, grid server is already running Git. So I can CD back to my domains folder. HTML. And now that I'm in my folder, I can do a git status. And that should give me an error that says there's no git repository here. But because it's giving me the git error, it's recognizing Git is already there. If it gave me a different error, I would want to do a Git version, and that would tell me if Git was here or not. So I can do a Git init, and that'll initialize a repo within this directory. And now I can do a Git add dot, or actually I'll do Git status first, just to show you what this looks like. So now that the repo is there, uh, if I do a git status, actually, no, I do want to do the git add because a git status might not recognize that I have a bunch of files in this folder. So what git add first does is git add adds these new files. It detects any files that are in my directory, and it'll tell me that I haven't committed them to a, a commit in version control yet. So let's go ahead and run that. This should take a second, but it should add all of my files. And then if I do a git status, it'll list all of the files that I have not committed yet, which is everything in my WordPress directory. And now I can do a git commit hyphen m for message, say hello world. And I have everything in Git. Uh, so what I want to show you, because my files and stuff uh, weren't working here, I still want to show you a couple other cool things. I used uh, Code Anywhere uh, as the better interface for editing my files. Again, this is a free app. It lets me FTP into my server here. And then I get a nice color-coded uh, file and editor. Go into my WordCamp US folder. If I go into the theme that's installed, in this case it's the default one because I wasn't able to install one. I can actually edit my style CSS file. It's nice and color coded if I get to the actual code part. And when I save it, it saves it directly back to the server. Now this isn't uh, in my commit yet, so I would then go back to my terminal and I would go ahead and it would flag this as a changed file and I would be able to commit it into Git. So I'm gonna show you some of the stuff. Uh, in case the internet wasn't working, I actually screen recorded me doing this demo, so I can scrub to the parts that you missed here. Uh, I wanted to show that uh, you can use PHP MyAdmin if you need to use it for something, but it's not mobile friendly. All right, so here's the part where had I installed my plugin, it would have worked. Thank you, I activate it. Then I go select my theme, install my theme, and uh, immediately in my child theme configurator, it's a, again a one-click thing, so I go into 
appearance and there's a child theme, I give it a name. Here I named it WCUS. And then I went ahead and clicked Save. It immediately created the theme and then set it as my default theme. Then once I did that, I could set my site tagline. I could do CSS editing directly in my style sheet, turn all the text red, which I wouldn't recommend from an accessibility standpoint. Um, but then I went into code anywhere and I decided I wanted it to be purple instead. And so I made it purple. And when I refreshed the site, you now can't see it on the projector screen at all. And then as a media, temp, uh, media test here, I went ahead and took a photo using the media file. I, don't, I took the photo upright, but for some reason it was anchored in a weird rotation. Um, but WordPress lets you edit that kind of stuff. And so it actually let me rotate the photo into the correct orientation. Add it, and it actually went into my post. And I did my inaugural Hello World post. So, in really rapid wrap up, uh, do I expect all of you to start building sites on your phone? No. The point here is really that somebody is going to, and as soon as they are, we'll, we will actually have better development tools in the spirit of uh, our community. It's as soon as you do make something available for somebody, it'll actually give us better tools for, sadly, if we're on the bus somewhere and a client calls and something's broken on their site and we have to fix it, uh, we will have tools that will allow us to do that. So that's my talk. OK, I can take two questions, apparently, if anybody has any questions. Uh, microphone in the middle. Hi, is the volume okay? Yes. All right. So um, I haven't been building sites on my iPhone 5, but I have been um, the admin for uh, two sites that I've been doing all the posts on. And I'm finding that um, it, it is really hard to use the iPhone. I don't know if WordPress is not fully iOS compatible or what it is, but is there a way that I can connect with people here to kind of uh, do consumer-based um, feedback for problem solving? Like, is there a group here that specifically is working on WordPress from your phone? I'm not sure. That would be a good question for the happiness bar, because I, I, and on Slack, WordPress Slack. Okay. Um, there probably is some weird community of, of people. Yeah, cause there, there's a lot of glitches. There, are, there really are a lot community. of glitches that are, yeah. are you know, because I've been working on buses and subways and running down the street, and there are still a lot of glitches, even mm -hmm. though it's great, and I love it, which is why I'm here. But yeah. OK, thanks. Thank you. Hi. Um, this is actually something I never considered before, so thank you for this presentation. Um, you talked about people using phones only to access the web. Um, and you made it seem like this would be a future thing, like where we would access the web mostly on the phone or people would access it mostly on a portable device, which makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. But what about considering desktop design when making one of, one of these things? Is that going to take a back burner? Uh, no. And so again, I don't know that this greatly impacts what we're doing. We're not in the market that uh, kind of spurred this idea. This was all spurred when I was listening to an NPR segment and they were talking about Xiaomi and how it had suddenly become the third largest smartphone manufacturer. And it was in markets that really never had computer saturation. And so it was just a think piece. Uh, and I don't know that the future is going to be us all on our phones, because if anybody ducked out of Rami's talk, uh, there's gonna, the future is going to be everywhere. It's going to be all kinds of different stuff. My, think piece here was I was just wondering if I was a, a tween today and I was learning the internet on my phone instead of, uh, instead of the Apple IIe, would, what would I be using instead of Angel Fire? And it would probably be WordPress and my iPod. Yeah, that, 
that's good to know. Thank you. Hi, it's yeah. not a question, but it's an answer to the first person's question. Hi, uh, we had a conversation at Summit about getting more user testing and more feedback, and we would love more user testing and feedback on all devices. Uh, so come to the contribution day tomorrow and uh, find me, um, find anyone from the design, and we'll, we really want to start um, doing user testing at contribution days, just getting feedback. There actually is make.wordpress.org forward slash flow. <laughs> I think that's it, isn't it, for the flow team? Um, yeah, uh, where you can actually see people are posting flows on different devices and flows on different areas. A flow is um, walking through the process. So things like that, we need people, we need user testing. So please come find me on the contribution day. You can. Thank you. Hi.